Les principaux gaz the main greenhouse effect gases well mixed in the atmosphere are carbon dioxide, CO2, methane, CH4, and nitrous oxide. And to us. But there are other compounds that we don't hear about so much which play a role in the additional greenhouse effect, such as ozone and halogenated compounds. According to the last IPCC report in 2013, halogenated compounds account for 12% of the radiative forcing of well mixed gases in the atmosphere, i.e., 0.36 watts per square meter. Radiative uh, forcing by ozone has been estimated to 0.4 watts per square meter, more or less the same amount as halogenated compounds. Ozone does not belong to the same category in the IPCC report because it is not a well-mixed gas in the atmosphere. The concentrations vary a lot on the vertical axis. This graph represents ozone concentration variations between 0 and 40 kilometers. The stratosphere located between 15 and 50 kilometers of altitude contains 90 percent of ozone. We observe a maximum concentration around the 25th kilometer, what we normally refer to as the ozone layer. In this part of the atmosphere, ozone absorbs ultraviolet radiation protecting life on Earth. In the troposphere, Although the absorption phenomenon is still there, it is reduced because most of the ultraviolet rays have been absorbed by higher altitude gases. In spite of lower ozone concentrations, the ozone gas is still a greenhouse effect gas and a pollutant in a lower strata. We talk about good ozone in the stratosphere and bad ozone in the troposphere. Let's come back to halogenated compounds. These compounds are made of carbon, potentially hydrogen, and one or more halogen atoms, such as chlorine, fluorine, or bromium. Among chlorinated compounds, we have the CFCs, chlorofluorocarbons, containing chlorine and fluorine, HCFCs, hydrochlorofluorocarbons, which contain chlorine, fluorine and hydrogen, HFCs, hydrofluorocarbons, with no chlorine. These three compounds have a history connected with that of stratospheric ozone, and we're going to discuss that. The first generation of chlorinated compounds were CFC, which do not exist in the natural state. They are purely synthetic, invented in 1928, and produced massively in the industry in the 50s. At the time, they were used for refrigerating. They were known as freon refrigerating gases, but also used as propulsors in aerosol sprays, expansive foams, and as cleaning agents in the electronic industry. At the time, the industry had said that these gases were inert in the atmosphere, but scientists discovered in the 80s that the compounds were inert in the, in the uh, atmosphere, but were transported in the stratosphere where their photodissociation liberated chlorine atoms, CFC11, CCL3F also called freon-11, releases a chlorine atom when it is photodissociated by ultraviolet rays in the uh, stratosphere. Scientific research has shown that chlorine atoms were responsible for the destruction of the ozone layer. The chlorine atom released reacts with ozone to form uh, chlorine monoxide, which then will destroy a second molecule of ozone. In the second reaction, the chlorine atom is regenerated and therefore reactions can happen in chain. This is what we call ozone destruction catalytic cycles. For, meter, for weather forecast uh, reasons, this was observed above the South Pole in the 80s. The maps show the total quantity of ozone in an atmospheric column in during the austral spring in October above the South Pole. The quantity was divided by three, going from 300 to one Dobson, Dobson units between the 70s and the years 2000 at the bottom. The scientific community, especially Molina and Roland, two researchers, warned the public opinion and politicians about this phenomenon threatening our planet. This is why the Montreal Protocol was signed in 87. The Montreal Protocol aimed at reducing CFC production and freezing that of halons. But uh, only in London in 90 and in Copenhagen in 92 did amendments prevent the 
production of CFCs in order to really decrease the quantity of chlorine contained in the atmosphere. For the first time, scientists, public administrations and industrialists were able to agree on a protocol to protect the environment. The rule was made possible with technology transfers and the use of replacement gases. The second generation of gases after CFCs are HCFCs. In this table, you can see that their destruction power is much lower than that of halons and CFCs, but still there is some destruction power. Therefore, HCFC are progressively being replaced by a third generation, HFCs, where there is no chlorine i.e. no danger whatsoever for the ozone layer. Regarding the ozone layer destruction, the protocol of Montreal is a success. But in this table, you may see that all of its compounds have a uh, high warming capacity and are distributed in the atmosphere. They therefore will contribute to uh, global warming. HFCs have a lot of power in terms of greenhouse effect, and they have... Uh, Increased, uh, the concentration has increased. In 2010, the emissions were 10%, but because they are now being used also for car air conditioning systems and uh, developing countries, their emissions have increased. HFCs are ruled by the Kyoto Protocol. Their life cycle is relatively short compared with the CFCs, and therefore eliminating them would have a uh, faster impact uh, than if we were to act on CO2 only. Destruction of ozone uh, has participated to a radiating forcing ever since the, the 80s. But this negative contribution is still very reduced compared with the positive uh, radiative forcing of tropospheric ozone. And uh, ozone is not released directly into the troposphere. It is a secondary compound derived from photochemical reaction with precursors. The precursors are naturally directly released, methane uh, compounds uh, with uh, nitrogen oxide released in much greater quantities uh, compared with the pre-industrial area, increasing therefore the concentration of ozone in the troposphere. We believe that this figure has been multiplied by five in Europe uh, over the last century. Ozone as a pollutant is controlled for air quality purposes and therefore Attempting to regulate ozone uh, concentrations allows us to act against air pollution, but also to reduce global warming. So, ozone and halogenated compounds, because they have a shorter life cycle than CO2, must be considered as uh, efficient targets if we want to reduce global warming.